Filming six little animals required a collaboration between TV crews and scientists around the world. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look there. Over two years, the team filmed on five continents in order to follow these journeys. The most remote location was Western Madagascar's Karindi Forest, the home of one of the most extraordinary journeys of all. Traveling in the cyclone season, the first challenge was getting to the forest. But the team's journey comes to a halt when a fallen tree blocks their only way in. It's a long way back for help. At least someone brought an axe. Yeah, it looks like pretty tough going, so we'll be here a while. Four hours later, progress is slow. With the tree finally chopped into pieces, they must still drag it out the way. There are several miles to go yet. We've just arrived after 13 hours of driving and I'm amazed that the cars actually made it through the amount of water. With no electricity and it's absolutely torrential rain. With a break in the rain, the team can finally start searching for the chameleons. One of the scientists studying the forest's chameleons is Ludo Rawalina. During the day, it's so difficult to find them. Don't it's better to search at uh, night. Finding a reptile no bigger than a human finger is challenging. Luckily, chameleons turn pale at night and sleep at the end of branches, making them easier to find by spotlighting. Cameras at the ready, things finally seem to be going well for the team. Whoa! You see that? We were just about to start filming and uh, just, yeah, just torrential. Just so wet. You could literally ring me out. Literally ring me out. Filming has to stop. After several days, the storm passes, but the fleeting life cycle of the Karindi chameleons is moving fast. Ludo is joined by Christopher Raxworthy, who has been studying chameleons in Karindi for decades. I have been fascinated with chameleons since I was uh, a young boy, and Madagascar was always a special place. Madagascar, nous possédons un très grand nombre de chameleons, dont certains sont, dont la majorité sont endémiques de la Grande Ville. If you want to see these chameleons, Karindi is the place to come to. Karindi isn't just a haven for chameleons. This forest is incredible, loving all of the amazing animals that we're finding in the forest. We've seen shafarks and brown lemurs and loads of beautiful birds, beautiful butterflies. Some of the wildlife has taken a shine to one member of the team. So Owen and I are currently in a tornado of flies. You having summer. fun, Owen? No. Why are you not having fun? Because <laughs> the flies like me too much. Despite the challenges, the team are able to document every element of this extraordinary life cycle for the very first time. They may also be filming this for the very last time.
these chameleons hatch, grow up, and die during one season. This unique life cycle has left them very vulnerable. It seems like a very risky strategy to actually put literally all your eggs in one basket. Uh, you could imagine if the eggs didn't hatch, then there's no backup generations to keep the population going. With their lives so intimately in sync with the seasons, a shift in the climate could be devastating. The rainy season now starts in Madagascar, perhaps as late as uh, two months later than uh, when I first started working in Madagascar. And it's not just the climate that is changing. The environmental pressures on Corindi uh, have increased over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. And so the great news is we have a lot more forest now, which is protected with inside reserves. But we also can tell from satellite images and from you know, personal experience that we can still see ongoing declines in terms of the total forest area. Over the last 70 years, half of Madagascar's forests have been destroyed, putting much of its unique wildlife, including the chameleons, at risk of extinction. Sadly, I have seen forests that I uh, worked in and loved being degraded and uh, cleared. And so that's a very painful experience to sometimes see that kind of uh, biodiversity loss. Si on perd les chameleons de Madagascar, certains animaux vont perdre leur prédateur, donc vont envahir, alors que d'autres vont perdre leur proie et n'auront pas à manger. Ces animaux sont très importants à la fois du point de vue richesse mais aussi du point de vue écologique. Ludo and many other local scientists are determined to preserve the remaining wildlife. Comme protégeant les caméléons, les serpents et toutes les richesses, on ne protège pas que la biodiversité mais on se protège nous-mêmes. The work of dedicated conservationists around the world is helping the tiny animals featured in this series to continue their journeys for many generations to come. <laughs>